right, so the next two chapters are kind of short, but I encourage you to read them all. I'm just giving a few highlights here. And it begins our introduction to host-parasite relationships. So how is the parasite or the pathogen um, interacting with the host? First important uh, term to understand is the term normal flora. You probably remember this from your microbiology class. For humans, it's primarily bacteria and the yeast candida. Right? So we are covered, as you can see in this diagram, head to toe, inside, outside, with all different types of organisms that are normally found in lots of different places. So you may or may not know that you're actually born sterile. And as soon as you hit that birthing canal, you immediately begin to get colonized by different organisms from the air, from touching people, um, if you breastfeed um, from your mother's skin, mother's milk. Um, there's some really interesting research going on between the colonization of newborns that are um, delivered vaginally versus delivered by C-section and between young infants that are bottle fed and those that are nursed. Um, and we're trying to learn, are there advantages, disadvantages um, to these different um, methods of raising our children? Um, Note that typically the bladder, your organs like your liver and kidneys and your respiratory tract, which you might think is kind of weird because this is where we get sick most of the time, these are all considered sterile. So they don't have normal flora that colonizes them, right? And you can see this question mark here for the lungs. So <clears throat> normally we don't have much microbes there, maybe none at all. Um, bladder infections um, and diseases of the organs are caused by microbes that get where they shouldn't be. You probably know that your intestinal system is a huge source um, Pound for pound, most of the feces you excrete is actually bacteria. So let's take a little look at your normal flora in your digestive tract. Um, what's interesting is Helicobacter pylori, which has a really bad reputation of causing ulcers, and stomach cancer. We think that guy used to actually be part of our normal flora. And then as we changed our sanitary conditions and the way we went about things, that this became more of an opportunistic of infection. So there's some pretty interesting research that's going on as to whether it's good or bad to have or to be colonized by Helicobacter pylori. <clears throat> Excuse me. Down here are your coliforms. You probably did a lot with those in your microbiology um, lab, growing those up. They're kind of cool to look at on different types of media. So we have lots, and here's the density. Um, they estimate that you are made up approximately 10 to the 13 cells, 10 to the 13 cells, and the bacteria that colonizes you is probably in the upwards of 10 to the 14, right? So you're overtaken by bacteria. So normal flora, a couple key points to understand is it's different in different parts of the world.
So when you travel, whoops, sorry about that. When you travel, you're not necessarily getting sick because the other country is dirtier. You're just not used to their normal flora. And when people return to their homeland after living abroad, a lot of times they get upset stomachs, again, because your normal flora will adjust to where you're living in the world, to what you're eating. Um, the good about normal flora is that there's competition. And what I mean by competition is that there are organisms competing for space and nutrients, and they kind of keep each other in check. Okay, So we're not letting one type of microorganism take over, but instead we're able to have a healthy community. And a lot of times this can keep out pathogens. We'll also talk about um, some of the ways we live symbiotically, right? So you probably know that um, bacteria produce nutrients for us. In our gut is what we're talking about. Oops, our gut. So vitamin B and vitamin K are produced by E. coli. We've talked about the good being part of the stimulating the immune system. So the hygiene hypothesis. So it's not good to be sterile. We're not evolved to be that way. We need these microorganisms to stimulate our immune system at an early age and get us ready to take on what the world might throw at us. Some of the, I would say, bad is that we are dependent on this normal flora for our health. And so when we take things like antibiotics, we're not only killing off the bad infectious bacteria that's causing us issues, we're also going to kill off some of our good bacteria. When we have to do things like immunosuppression, So if someone's getting an organ transplant, they're put on immunosuppressors so that they don't reject the organ, but that also knocks down our immune system. And sometimes that normal flora takes over and causes infection. And remember, we call those opportunistic infections. So the last couple of slides I'm going to talk about in this video are the symbiotic relationships, just to help you define. So commensalism is when one species lives harmlessly on a host. So one is benefiting. The other is neutral, not harmed, okay? And this is really the majority of our normal flora. Okay. Now, 
The next type that we're going to talk about in the next slide is called mutualism. And I'll tell you, it's a very blurry line for humans and their organisms, whether it's commensal or mutual. So in mutualism, both organisms benefit. Okay, so helping with our digestion. Right? Producing vitamins for us. These are all examples of mutualistic relationships between us and our normal flora or our bacteria. Where we get a little more interesting and the focus of this class is really parasitism. Okay, so this is where one benefits and the other is harmed. Okay, so in this case, the parasite is getting the advantage of nutrients and a place to live and reproduce, and it's causing disease in the host. Um, just a side note, Dr. Jones has just started offering, I believe in the fall, a parasitology course. And what's really interesting is though we're gonna focus on human pathogens, parasitology has been talked about as a way of life. So there are not only just human pathogens and animal pathogens, but there are lots of parasites in the environment, right? So affecting aquatic fish and shellfish and plants and anything where one is benefiting and the other is harmed. So if this idea gets you a little excited, I highly encourage you to check out Dr. Jones's class. Um, it's gotten great reviews. So the last slide I wanna show you is just a figure from your book telling you to think about this as this ongoing balance. Okay, these relationships are continuously evolving based on the health of the host, um, based on the environment, um, lots of influences into the type of relationships we have with the microorganisms in and on our body. All right, when we come back, we'll talk about what is a pathogen. Ooh.